Hello fellow Cocoon Masters, today we're talking about Jake Cocoon, one of my favorite games of all time. This was released in the United States in July of 1999, so a lot of people weren't even born when this game was released. And this game is a JRPG at its core with a lot of monster taming elements. Kind of reminds me of Shin Megami Tensei from what I've seen so far. I've only played a little bit of that series, but very, very similar. Lots of really cool monsters. You can fuse them in this game. You can level up your own character. I'm really excited to jump on in. If you enjoy Jay Cocoon and other monster gaming content, please make sure to like, subscribe, and let's jump on in. In Jay Cocoon, you play as Levant, who is the protagonist of this game, and you are tasked with saving your village against minions and other demon-like monsters that are attacking the village and have a very strained relationship with mankind. When you first start the game, there is an intro, I don't want to say parable, it's like a story of sorts, that one is animated really well, but two tells the relationship between Elrim and humans and the divine beast. It's it's really like lore if that makes sense. But once you get past like the 30 minutes of dialogue, you jump into the game and you quickly find out that you can go between your main like home village and the different areas in that village. And then you have different forests that you'll go to, you'll get keys for those forests to then go get different minions to defeat different divine beasts or other elements that are attacking you or the forest or your village. Like the title suggests, you'll use cocoons to capture these monsters and once you capture them a few things happen. One, they're added to your party if you have room. Two, your capture level will increase with enough XP. Three, you're able to then sell those cocoons as silk for money to buy weapons and armor and all kinds of different things or most importantly you can then merge those monsters together combining physical characteristics of both monsters also combining their strengths in terms of like attack or defense also combining their elements which is really important to keep in mind because we have four different elemental types in jay cocoon that you'll be utilizing um, very similar to other monster games you may have played already. The combat is turn-based and you will be using your elemental typings to hopefully take an advantage against your opponent. And those are very important as you come up against different bosses. There are, like I said, four different elemental types. There's water, earth, fire, and wind. And depending on what you're going up against, you want to make sure you have the right beast to help you with those bosses. The bosses become embodiments of different parts of the story, which is interesting. And thankfully with the fusion mechanic, there's not a whole lot of grinding you have to do in this game. Although you may want to level up certain mons at certain times times overall you can typically do some merging to really beef up your mons before you get into a fight as you fuse your monsters you'll want to keep in mind what elemental types you're fusing so for example if you start out with a pure water element and you merge it with fire a bunch of different times you slowly and slowly and slowly will dilute that water element and turn it into more of a fire type so just keep that in mind it's really interesting though one i really think it's cool that physically the mons change I just think that was so cool as a kid that you could merge these two demons, monster things and get something even scarier. And also, I don't think Monster Fusion was really big when this game came out. Remember, this was 1999, <laughs> early 2000s, super early 2000s. And I just don't think Monster Fusion was huge. And even still, it's not a big part of the monster taming genre that I'm aware of. Like when I see it in games, I'm like, oh, this is like a cool feature. It reminds me of Jay Cocoon. So that's one thing that is just so, so cool. You have infinite possibilities and in how you merge these monsters, how you create your teams. And it's something that adds some replay value to a game that's relatively short. I do want to share a few final thoughts about the monsters in this game. Because again, that's a very core, if not the core part of this game. And the reason why you're going to be playing it, that fusion. Um, so this was not developed with a character designer uh, for the Studio Ghibli movies, Kiki's Delivery Service, and I Can Hear the Sea. I haven't seen those movies personally, um, but if you're a fan of Studio Ghibli or those character designs, you're really gonna like some of the stuff you're seeing in this game. The amount of monsters you see in your first playthrough of the game before you get to any end game content is robust in the sense that most minions are gonna have different elemental forms. So if you see one minion, there are four versions of that. And there are just a decent amount of minions you'll see in the overworld. You also have the Eternal Corridor, which consists of a near infinite area where new monsters that were unavailable in the main game can be found. So as you beat the game, you get to the end game, you get the Eternal Corridor, you get even more monsters and you get even more challenge in the game. So again, for a PS1 game, to be relatively short, but have decent end game content, I think was ahead of its time in that way. And hopefully if you're thinking, oh, it's nine hours, I don't wanna play this. 
you have a lot of end game content that's really challenging and adds to the gameplay experience quite a bit. Speaking of story, unfortunately it's a really short story. I think I played through it in 9 hours and I think I got lost a couple times trying to do like some funny things. So it's a very short game in general. The story is kind of bland, it's like your typical JRPG where you have to go and save the world or your village and there's like evil spirits and things like that. But it's a pretty decent time, especially if you like older like retro monster games. It's one that you'll, it'll get you through the game, but you're really playing this for the monster fusion and the battles and like the monster taming aspects, not the story necessarily. One underrated aspect of this game is that the voice acting and translations for this game are so bad that they're good. There's tons of pronunciations where you think to yourself, why would they choose to say it this way? Or like Mabu's character who becomes your wife is just like outwardly opposed to everything that's going on and doesn't seem like a super sympathetic character or someone that you're rooting for as your partner. Uh, but there's just so much in the game that would make me laugh, I think unintentionally. It's just the charm of playing a retro game that is very much a JRPG. If you are someone who loves to enjoy like the story of the game and exploration, there's not too much of that in this game, it's pretty beeline to where you need to go. But there is enough exploration at different points in the game that you get different dialogue and different interactions with the characters. So that's pretty rewarding, I would say. The first few times I played through this game, I actually didn't know that when you would talk to a certain character after a certain event, they'd give you different information. So that's kind of cool if you want to just see that lore and see the world build up. For me, for the most part, I just kind of beeline to the different bosses and different new mobs I could capture and merge. But just wanted to name that as we're talking about the story. Thinking about the gameplay, there are a few things to keep in mind. One, you only get XP on one of your minions if you defeat another minion or beast in battle so there's no like shared xp you only gain levels with your character if you capture another minion so just keep that in mind and you also have different items and armors you can get you can get like different swords there are a few secret weapons as well that i may do a separate video on that basically one shot the entire game but they're like randomized when they drop so you can't reliably pick those up i do have to say the controls for this game are terrible it's been compared to Silent Hill, I haven't played those games, but it almost feels like it's inverse and your character moves around like in a blocky kind of way. After you get used to it, it's kind of fluid, if you can call it fluid. I guess it's easier once you get used to it, but just keep in mind there is a learning curve for the controls. It's going to seem janky at first, but you will get used to it over time and eventually run through wherever you need to go and you can avoid monsters and all that kind of fun stuff, but it will take maybe... 10 minutes or so to adjust to those controls. And then last thing about gameplay here is that you do have other items to heal yourself or your minions or their ability to do their special attacks. I do feel like your mana gets drained super quickly in this game by using some of your more powerful moves. If you've gotten this far in the review or skipped to this portion of the review to talk about accessibility, this game is currently only officially available on PlayStation. So if you don't have a PlayStation at your mom's house or a PS2 at your grandma's house waiting and you don't have the game, you have to go to emulating. There's a really big community that's in a lot of modding on the ROM for this game. And you can go to the Discord that'll be listed down below to get any kind of assistance there. There are randomizers that are really cool. There are all kinds of different things you can do to the ROM to make the game more challenging. Even if you played the game years ago or played it last week, the replay value because of this community is really great. And the few times I did reach out to them for help with getting my own emulation set up, they were amazing. So I do recommend checking out that Discord down below. Great community, especially if you want to get up and running with emulating this game. And if you have any questions about that, you can follow me on Twitter or send me a message on Discord. I'll be happy to help you out. And before we jump into our concluding thoughts, I do want to mention that there is a sequel to Jake Cocoon. So if you play this game or you see the review and you're like, wow, I enjoyed this, I want more, you can pick that game up. It's for PS2. Very similar, you may have to go to emulation if you don't have a PS2 or you don't have the game. The gameplay is a little bit different. It's the same like overworld kind of dungeon crawler, um, but the customization for fusion is a little bit different. And your battle style is different where you have like, I think it's like six different monsters and you rotate between them depending on their elements. So all to say, if you've enjoyed the review and you play the game and enjoy it, definitely consider playing Jake Kun 2. Likely we'll do some kind of breakdown or like quick review of that game as well. Um, but let's jump into our final thoughts about this game. On the surface, Jake Kun may seem like a very bland, typical JRPG, but the monster fusion, the dialogue, the pretty grim and heavy story, the graphics for being a PS1 game all make this what I think is a game worth revisiting or visiting for the first time in 2023. 
if you haven't played in a few years, you know what you're getting into, but it's always fun to go back and try out different teams, different customizations. If you've never played this game and you enjoy monster taming content, it's one I definitely recommend. It's in a lot of ways, for me, a foundational game in monster taming for myself personally. And I think you'll enjoy this one. The music's pretty good. Like I mentioned, Studio Ghibli designers are involved in the game in some capacity. And overall, it's a ton of fun. It's nine hours, so it's not gonna break your bank in terms of time. So I would recommend you check this one out. As always, if you enjoyed Jake Cocoon and other monster saving content, please make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Alright, bye everyone.